Hi everyone. So, yeah, this is my laptop screen. Don't mind the games. Um, I'm here to tell you a story today. Um, and it's not one that I want to tell. So let me go ahead and pull up some pictures for you. Um, well, let's first, let's go to this website here. So there's a website, it's Long Island Adoption Support.com, I believe. Ah, let's just try this. they took their website down or maybe it's li adoption support.com yeah that's it okay so um so i really want to talk about um adoptive parents and hopeful adoptive parents who say they are allies and even birth moms um, allies to the family preservation movement is, is what I'll say that they're saying they are. Um, when they're really not allies, but they know all the right things to say, all the right things to do to make you believe that they're an ally. Um, and uh, one of my adoptee friends coined this ally theater. I don't know if she wants to be named, so I won't name her. Um, she's a prominent adoptee with a great voice in the community, um, lots of patience um, for things, but she coined this ally theater. And what that means is it's like acting, like you're pretending to be an ally. Some people do it for the kudos. Some people do it for, you know, because it makes them feel good. And other people do this because they want to hide from people like me what they're really doing because they don't want it exposed or maybe they even really believe that they're doing a good thing um but in the meantime they're still helping create more adoptees um, or i guess you could say helping create orphans to become adoptees one of those people is and i'm not sure if i'm saying her name correctly um shameen Vizzy. Um, I was first made aware of who she was um, after the Kelly Shade debacle. Um, and there's a Facebook page. Um, Kelly Shade, when she created, or she didn't, cre oh, maybe she, she didn't create Adoption Ethics Education and Information Group, but she was a, like a co-founder, I guess you could say. Um, the group originally had only hopeful adoptive parents and adoptive parents in it. Um, so when we uh, archived that, we uh, found lots of videos that I had never paid attention to before because they were a couple years old. Um, and I was not added to the group um, until later. So I didn't think to go back through videos or anything. Um, Anyway, when I went back through the videos in the group, I discovered that, um, I guess because there was no adoptees or birth parents in there, it was like a free-for-all, um, uh, that there was a video or there was a few videos of people um, basically giving a how to coerce expectant mothers guide. And Chameen was one of them. Um, didn't really think anything of it. I'm not going to publish the video. Um, I do have it uploaded on YouTube, but it's uploaded privately, so only people with the link can see it. Um, I'm not going to publish it because it is so damaging and so dangerous that I do not want other hopeful adoptive parents to see it and use the tactics that she explained in the video um, to get babies. Um, so yeah, that's not going to happen. But basically, Chameen um, runs Long Island Adoptive Families, and you can see here, reaching families since 2002. All right. 
and this is the website again. I probably should have updated my browser before we did this. So let's see, the website today is not the same as it was five days ago. There's a lot of things missing now. Um, there is no about us section anymore. Um, but five days ago, uh, there was. Let's see where that is. Okay, well, I don't know. We'll just go through some of the things that are missing. So, yeah, five days ago, this is what the home page looked like. Home, About Us, Groups, Resources, Calendar, Testimonial, Meet Our Families, Contact Us, Blog. Um, and this is a screenshot I took of, of my computer, and you can see down here, it's or four days ago, 6 uh, 25 2019 at 7.57 p.m. Um, so there's that. And then um, missing stuff too. Um, this was just, uh, there. there's a blog on there and you can see that the blog link says June 17th, 2019. Um, Lost on me, Jody Landers is the end of that quote. The first quote is here. And it's just an adoption quote. Children born to me, call me mom, the magnitude of that tragedy, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's basically just for me to show you that this blog on there was going um, until June 17th. Um, Welcome back to yet another Oh, I guess we're going to play, huh? So this must be coming from the website. So as you can see here, it says established in 2012, Long Island Adoptive Families has grown from 15 families to 280 across Long Island and New York City. Our support team of families is here to help educate from their own experience. We are a great, uh, we are a group of fellow adoptive and foster parents who work as a team to provide resources for our local adoption community. Okay, we're gonna stop right here. Any support group, any group that provides resources that consists entirely of fellow adoptive and foster parents that work as a team to provide resources is not the kind of support that is going to be supportive of family preservation. Um, it's just not. Um, our support group was created to support adoptive and foster families from all backgrounds. So again here, we're just reiterating what this group is about. It's a support group for adoptive and foster families. That's why it was created. Um, we share our journeys and our resources in a supportive and candid environment. Mm -hmm. Um, we are peer-led, not professionals. That's emphasized many times, even in private messages between Shamin and me. And the reason that this is emphasized is because um, <laughs> they don't want to be considered adoption professionals. However, it doesn't matter if they're peer-led or not. The people that run this organization are acting as adoption professionals. They are counseling others or they call it sharing experience um, on how to become an adoptive family. Um, I'm sure there's probably support groups for people who are already adoptive families, um, you know, on how to be an adopt, just like any, you know, Facebook support group, but it is, it, they clearly do still um, participate in pre-placement uh, sharing of resources. Um, we are an independent support group and are not affiliated with any religious or professional organizations. Okay, so again, you know, we're not professionals, we're not professionals, like for legal purposes, probably, or for purposes like what I'm about to do. Um, yeah, they might not be affiliated with any professional organizations, but she is, and she acts as a professional. Okay. So that's the only thing you're going to get on the website that's about them. 
for right now. And let's see here. Contact info. Okay, and this just shows the contact info from the website. Telephone number, email, date and time. This was me time stamping again. So this was the day before the 24th. Um, so this is part of a testimonial on the website that has since been removed, I believe. Oh no, testimonials are still here. So if you wanted to head over to their testimonials, it's all good things about how this organization has helped them adopt. And we're talking domestic infant adoption as well. This organization does still participate in pre-placement domestic infant adoption support groups. Um, let's go back to here. Um, group, group, group. No, we're not ready for that yet. Okay, so Long Island website. The pre-adoption group. Um, this um, was this on there still. And my browser is going to be slow. Our support groups, yep. Um, and then you can see pre-adoption group. And when you click on there, there's just too much going on on this website. All right. Um, so you can see that the pre-adoption was removed compared to um, the screenshot that I took on June 24th. Um, I think the language is the same. This is uh, for adults only. We're proud to have helped, supported, and shared experiences with pre- and post-adoptive parents since 2002. Um, each family joining our group has a unique story to tell, and no matter how different the journeys may be, we are here to provide all the support each one needs. No matter where you are in the adoption journey, that's important. No matter where you are in the adoption journey, well, you are welcome to give your support and to be supported. Um, the group is for those considering adoption. So those considering adoption, those who have decided to adopt, those building a family through adoption, and those who are already built their families through adoption. The purpose for the general group meetings is to provide information and support. Here, this is important. The only goal in our group is to become a family. All right. And uh, it's here too. The only goal in our group is to become a family. Um, and then just goes, there's questions you may have when starting the adoption process. Books are an amazing resource. Um, we ask members lists what topics we've talked about, how you stay busy while you wait, what are the differences between open, semi-open, and closed adoption. I mean, very clearly what to expect at the hospital. This is centered around um, domestic infant adoption as well on this website, which, you know, as we can see, today is the 29th and it's still up here. Um, let's see. No, oh, some of them were on my phone. <sighs> let's see. Testimonials. We can, you can go look at those yourself, but, um, getting started. The journey of adoption can be stressful. Agency versus private. Domestic versus international is down here. Um, there's three. Three says, um, oh, we did that one already. Four. Oh, we looked at that on the website. Five. This is a, this is a testimonial. Um, whether you are seeking to adopt a child, had a newborn or a young child already adopted, Long Island Adoption Group is an extremely wonderful and helpful group to belong to. Chimin is wonderful, and so are all the members. Um. So it's just, I'm so glad Chamin reached out to me when she did. Just, you know, kind of her association with everything here. Uh, and then, 
So there's a meter of families. And this is gone now. And these are people that were on the website. And as you can see, Chimene and Rick, support group leader. Chimene and Rick, a little bio. And then... As a group leader, she has extensive knowledge on all forms of adoption, as well as the foster care and foster to adopt process. Feel free to contact her anytime. Um, this is the 25th of June. The only reason I was able to get these that say the 25th of June is because I still had this browser page open um, when she took these down after um, a verbal, um, you know, me verbally telling her that if she had truly changed, like she said she had, that this would not still be on her website. Um, so you can see right clearly, support group leader. Um, these are all people that, you know, adoptive and hopeful adoptive parents can contact and they would be happy to help. Um, I won't go through all the families here. I have them though. Um, is this the yeah, that's another. I mean, it goes, there's, as you can see, there's quite a few here. On my phone, but not on my computer, so I won't be able to do this with a screen capture. On my phone, I do have where it, it there's a screenshot that's now gone from the website of uh, Chameen and her little bio in the About Us section. I will maybe, if anybody wants that, just message me and I'll give it to you. Um, so there's that. So then when you go to look at you guys get to look at my, um, my Facebook page and my slow browser here because I didn't update it. So when you go to her, um, personal Facebook page, my goodness. Exit out of those. So we're going to go here. And if you're still with me so far, awesome, because I promise you this is all going to tie into something that you need to hear. Okay, so we are now on her page. Um, and you can see where she's sharing content um, from the Adoptive and Foster Family Coalition of New York. Okay, so let's go visit their page. You know, New York, obviously, Long Island Adoptive Families. They're both in New York. So AFFCNY. Actually, we should probably go on to About Us. Okay, so here's their page. And let's go to About. Now, I am not saying that the AFFCNY facilitates adoptions or pre-placement. Um, but let's just go ahead, since she's sharing things from them, and let's look at their website. Um, they were founded in 1975. It unites adoptive and foster parent groups. Okay, now remember, Long Island Adoptive Families is a support group for pre- and post-adoptive families. Concerned agencies and individuals throughout the Empire State. Um, we represent the family's viewpoints. Okay, so we're, we're talking adoptive families' viewpoint. And work to improve and expand the services available to children and families. Um, so yeah, services to children is good, and adoptive families is good if they're trying to provide, you know, services to help people become better adoptive parents. Um, our goals, they're educate and support foster, kinship, and adoptive parents, and the professionals who serve them. So when we're talking about educating and supporting the professionals, we're talking about attorneys, agencies, um, adoption professionals, um, improved services, Increase citizen involvement, educate leaders and stakeholders about the realities, challenges, and rewards of foster kinship and adoptive parenting, on and on and on. Okay, our mission. The coalition unites foster, adoptive, and kinship care families, giving them a voice. 
Okay, and that also says providing support information and advocacy. So in other words, they're advocating advocacy for adoptive kinship care families oh, and foster and giving them a voice. Personally, I don't feel like they need more of a voice than they already have, to be honest with you. So that's one of my issues. <sighs> Their vision is that no foster, adoptive, or kinship care families in New York State will feel alone or unsupported, and that all such families will have the tools, support, and community they need to nurture their children and be role models for other others. Okay, understandable being an adoptive parent, especially an adoptive parent of a child who has trauma, is probably not easy. So, you know, I'm kind of just like on the fence here, like this is kind of a, a whatever, you know, but definitely this, you know, it's not family pr preservation minded. It's not about preventing adoptees. It's not about helping families stay together. That's not their mission. You know, this is about um, after adoption. Um, Supporting adoptive families, giving adoptive families a voice, and advocating for adoptive families. So, back to Chmeen's page. And you can see here, she manages Long Island adoptive families and Moms Unhinged. And she's sharing Adoptive and Foster Family Coalition. Stuff that's from their page. Ooh, some clues, clues. Then we have um, May 30th, uh, which was less than a month ago, and it says, please feel free to share. Uh, looking to learn how to adopt or foster on Long Island, or you are a post-adoptive foster family looking to meet others, our next general meeting is New update, we have expanded support. We now have the following support groups, pre post adoptive support. Um, contact Shameen via PM or the email. If you remember, like at the contact info, this is the same email um, that's provided on the website. So when you go to use the contact info from the website, you are going to get Shameen. Um, clearly pre adoptive support group. Um, and then if you go back a little bit further here, and this is all public information, like all this stuff is public. Um, an amazing conference, again, more of the AFF CNY. Um, so this is April 26, looking to learn how to adopt or foster on Long Island, New York City, or you are posted up to family. Again, another post for the support group. Um, let's see here. I think that's, I mean, I really don't really need to go back anymore. Let's go back to the FFCNY. All right, so as I said, I was first brought to the attention of Shameen in Adoption Ethics Education and Information Group a few weeks ago when we archived the group and I was going through everything that had been posted to try to essentially clean the group and make it so that nobody could use any of the information that was given there to, um, uh, coerce moms. Um, there was, and Shameen was, I mean, her video was horrible. I, I don't even want, I just, you just need to trust me when I say it was horrible. Um, I mean, I'm about to show you that even she said it was horrible. Um, so I guess trust both of us. I do have the videos uploaded, but I cannot share them. Okay. So then this happened. So as you can see, she posted in a group when New York went open. Um, what a historic day, and I'm so glad I was able to watch it live. So proud of Annette and Claudia for all the work they put into this. She's referring to Annette Marie and Claudia Corrigan Darcy. And I took issue with this because she's still facilitating support groups for pre-adoptive families there's no need for pre-adoptive families for domestic infant adoption. Um, she's helping to create adoptees. Even if she's not running the support groups herself anymore, she is 
Long Island adoptive families is her. So as you can see, I started to comment here and I will show you the full context of that. So I said our adoption professionals allowed in here, especially one so heavily associated with helping Kelly Shade use ethics to facilitate adoptions with their how to get a baby videos. Um, in addition to videos in there, Shimin and Kelly were very arm to arm. Kelly called on her a lot. Kelly learned pretty much everything she knew with the help of Shimin. So I'm not a professional. Do you mean me? And this is very plain coy to me. She's very well aware of what I mean at this point when she comments this. Um, and remember when I went back on the website and it was, we are not professionals, we are peer led. Well, you can say you're not a professional all you want. You can say you're peer led. Um, you're a professional. If you're, you're conducting a large organization that puts people together, that helps people learn how to adopt, you're part of, you're a professional. You, you're running this. I don't care if you're getting paid or not. Um, so that's why I pointed that out. That was super important. Um, you know, pretending like you don't know what I'm talking about, pretending you're not a professional, like, well, technically, you know, to me, that's not really owning anything you've done. Um, that doesn't scream to me. I no longer feel that way. That screams to me I'm trying to cover my own ass. Um, and then again, I'm not sure if professionals are allowed in this group. I just heard about the Kelly Shade issue, and I have to say I was disgusted by what I found. Again, she participated in it. She was right there with Kelly while the matching was going on in the group. There's several posts with matching. She liked the post. She did videos in the group about the matching and how to match and how to course. So I'm not sure if professionals are allowed in this group. I just heard about the Kelly issue. I have to say I was disgusted. Well, you participated. So again, not being very forthcoming here. So I call her out on it. Your videos show you're complacent. You did lots of videos for Kelly since the group's inception. And you know, there are, it, they were for Kelly. She says, I'm doing this for Kelly. Um, how to get an imam to like you, how to find imams. I'm not sure why you'd be so coy. I just find it ironic that someone who's helped assist hundreds of families, and she boasts this in her video, and the act of coercion to make adoptees would be posting something like this. And here we go. Claudia jumps in to defend her when I'm clearly calling out somebody that should be called out. I mean, for everything that I had found and everything that she posts and everything that their web, the Long Island Adoptive Families website says, everything, I mean, does she not deserve to be called out? Or at the very least, do we not deserve to know this and question her and ask her where she stands now and to be accountable for the things that she's done? as members of the family preservation movement, but apparently Claudia felt otherwise. And she says, Shamina's is better than safe. I know her personally. So if she's saying I know her personally, I'm gonna assume she knows everything that I've just dug up and probably more. Please trust me on this. If she can't be here, she'll respectfully leave and it's all good. Please be kind to her. You are both dear to me. Well, one, I am not dear to Claudia. Um, I think and what I'm going to almost guarantee is this right here, is Claudia using her voice um, and the trust she has gained from the family preservation movement over the years in an attempt to keep me from poking more around Shamin for digging and in a possible attempt to protect her from me exposing her. And I could not figure it out at first. Um, so then you go to the next message. Um, she left the group, um, and I'm chastised. Then she's back. Thanks for allowing me back in. I'd be so happy to explain who I am and what I do for the group, if that's okay. Um, I think it'd be good for you to know who I am. Please let me know if this is appropriate. That sounds great. She's like, appreciate it. I had chemo yesterday, so I'll post something by tomorrow afternoon. And, and this I also have an issue with because it's almost like, oh, poor me. And you'll see why later, why I, I, this, you know, this is not the first time she says this to try to take the heat off herself. Take your time. 
Oh, I'm the victim here. I mean, if she would have just been forthcoming to begin with and answered my question, none of this would have happened. So um, this she kind of just, Jennifer, you are right. I used to be the person you accused me of being. I'm trying very hard to learn and grow and not be that person anymore. I'm an adoptive mom, blah, 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 who leads a local support group for both HAPs and APs for the past 12 years. Um, she reiterates this in a private message I'm going to show you, so I don't have it all here. And then Claudia um, responds with, um, she's a really good egg. She gets it. She's a role model to other APs on how to take new info and change. If more APs were like her, our work would be much easier. I am officially at this point disassociating myself with Claudia Corrigan Darcy. Um, and she's not for family preservation anymore. I don't believe that she believes in infant adoption. I just feel that she believes that her job, her career is um, more important than the family preservation movement. I think that's why she is protecting Shamin. And you'll see more why I think this later. Um, and if you really take a look back um, at what Claudia has done for family preservation the past maybe three or four years, it's not much, if any. Um, her blog Musings of the Lame, the Facebook page for that, everything's syndicated mostly, um, meaning when a blog post gets posted, it gets posted to Musings of the Lame, the website, as well as the Facebook page. So my blog is part of that syndication. Um, she went and collected a whole bunch of people in adoption land and asked if she could have their blog syndicated, meaning when you publish a blog post, it automatically goes to her blog and her Facebook page. So things that you're seeing on there are mostly from that. Um, I did message her today asking her to um, take my blog off syndication because I do not want to be associated with this. Um, so I essentially ignore Claudia and say, I am still waiting for you to explain why you're, why you're still running support groups for HAPs, if not to teach them how to create more adoptees. Um, and she does the sadly adoption will probably continue to exist. <sighs> Our group is mostly APs and foster families with very few HAPs. I try to educate them about ethics and trauma and life parenting adoptee. And that's all well and good, except you're still doing this. You are still doing this. HAPs. So I don't care how hard you lobby Congress for open records. I don't care how many adoptive families that you're helping to educate in the name of ethics. I think we all learn that ethics is a really good cover for bad behavior. Um, if you're still doing this, if you're still teaching this, you are not somebody that I want to be associated with. I'm not sure why anybody who believes in family preservation would defend this, to be honest with you. Um, so then we got the... Um, I encourage them to seek support from each other. Um, and then she names the groups, trauma informed her. She knows all the right words to say, and I'm not sure where she learned that from. Um, but all the right words to take me off or take her off my radar. But let's go ahead and um, let's revisit this one. I don't, I'm not a professional. What do you mean? I just heard about Kelly Shade. Um, but you know, here she seems to know quite a mu much and I'm right. I used to be the person. So it was almost like she was not going to be forthcoming until she was kind of forced to, cause I wouldn't let it go. So, you know, like I said, somebody who's truly changed, you know, anyway, um, let's see. So Claudia promotes and supports the group she runs. I promote and support the group she runs because it helps the kids who are already adopted. So it doesn't matter that she's helping hopeful adoptive parents. Claudia supports it because the other half of the group helps kids who are already adopted. Um, the trauma work and training given to APs is what keeps our kids away from ranches. So let me tell you something here. This was a low blow to me. 
because my daughter was sent to a ranch by her adoptive parents. So this was Claudia backhandedly and passive aggressively telling me to shut up and to leave Shamine alone. Um, I'm sorry, we can do work about trauma and helping adoptees without also helping facilitate adoptions by educating hopeful adoptive parents on how to get moms to pick them. So uh, again, she promotes and supports the group that Shemaine runs, which is Long Island Adoptive Families, Long Island Adoption Support Group. So I say, as long as you continue to work with hopeful adoptive parents pre-placement, not people who are actually parenting adoptees, the people who want to create adoptees, I don't care how much good work you do, to be honest. And then I just go, why are you continuing? Pretty much all the things I just said. And then I call out Claudia and say, also, please stop using the, stop with the ranch stuff. My kids still would have been sent to a ranch. Adoptive parents that don't want to learn ethics don't learn ethics. And I stand behind that. All right. So then while that was going on, um, and this is over the course of a few days, um, Shamine had messaged me and I will just kind of go over these. She wants to apologize. I'm absolutely right. And the videos I did in the past were awful, wrong and awful. After meeting Claudia and becoming her great friend, I learned my lesson and I've become a different person. See, like, here's my thing. You can say you become a great person all you want. I don't believe you. Two years ago, you were posting videos telling people how to coerce moms. Um, a year ago, you were in bed with Kelly Shade. And a month and a half ago, well, I guess two months by now, two months ago, you were still posting for Long Island, Long Island Adoptive Families um, support groups that included pre-placement support. Um, I know you don't know who I am, but people have to learn, and I was one of them. Um, apparently, she has not learned a lot because she still has not disassociated herself from Long Island Adoptive Families, and they are still helping to create adoptees. That's all fine, you know, hopeful adoptive parent support groups, all fine and dandy. But when Claudia Corrigan Darcy is trying to shut me up when I'm questioning her about those support groups and asking her how she can be involved with open records and adoptee rights when she's still helping create adoptees, um, that's when my red flag goes up because Claudia is using the trust that she has gained throughout the years um, and that clout um, to silence me when I'm questioning somebody who clearly needs to be questioned. Um, and, you know, it doesn't go well with me and uh, I have to call it out. So she goes on, I'm a mom, only a mom, and I have learned a lot over the last few years. I mean, her video was two years ago. I knew nothing when I started this journey, yet you boast that you've been doing the adoption support groups for 12 years on your website. Um, I wasn't smart, I'm not proud, but I'm still trying, and that may very well be true, but you're not trying hard enough. I really am, sorry I came across that way. Hopefully one day you'll see a different person I am. I'd be happy to remove the videos. I'm sure you would. And state what I did. Listen, I'm proud of what I did. I mean, it's almost like thou doth protest too much. I'm actually not a part of the groups anymore since I thought it was just a bad idea to say. Um, she actually was a part of Adoption Ethics Education and Information Group when um, I took over as an admin like a few weeks ago. She just wasn't in under this profile. She was under the profile... L.I. Chamine Vizzy, which is her Long Island Adoptive Families Facebook page, and I booted her and blocked her from the group. Um, I can show you that profile. So there's just all these inconsistencies in her messages to me, which is not helping me trust her anymore, and I don't think anybody else should as well, um, even, even with Claudia uh, vouching for her. So this is where, yeah, so this profile was still in um, Adoption Ethics Education and Information Group. I booted it. I blocked it personally. 
you can see here. So this is her profile is pretty much the same as her other one. Um, so I actually am not part of the groups anymore since I thought it was just a bad idea to stay. No, she didn't think it was a bad idea to stay because she still had a profile in there. Um, if you want, I can make that statement. I work closely with Claudia and the New York Coalition now. So I need to make sure that people can trust what I'm doing. And that sums it all up. If she's part of this, Claudia and her employer, because that's who Claudia works for, are toast. If she's part of Kelly Shade facilitating adoptions. So there, there's a lot for her to lose and a lot of reasons for her to lie and a lot of reasons for Claudia to cover her ass and tell me to shut up questioning her. Um, so Claudia is the Director of Outreach and Advocacy at Adoptive and Foster Family Coalition of New York. Um, and yes, Claudia did help lobby for open records in New York. I still don't think that excuses bad behavior. I don't think that excuses her from telling me to shut up and using my child, my adoptee child's experience being sent away for two years um, as a weapon against me to make me shut up when I'm questioning somebody who participated in extremely unethical behavior and is still participating in that behavior, even if it's not as bad as it used to be. Um, so yeah. All right. I work closely with Claudia and New York Coalition now, so I need to make sure people can trust what I'm doing. Okay. And then I sent her these. These are just the screenshots that we all went over, and I said this was two months ago. I don't believe a word that comes out of your mouth. Um, she says, we work, yes, I run a group. We work with the Coalition of New York now. So Long Island Adoptive Families is now associated with Claudia's employer. Um, Pre-adoption was something we did, sure. If we have people in the group that come to us, we teach them how to do this ethically. So here she is, pre-adoption is definitely something to do. She teaches them how to become hopeful adoptive parents ethically. We don't need more hopeful adoptive parents for domestic infant adoption. Um, we teach about trauma. Listen, I know you don't want to believe me. I don't want to make this worse. Um, it's almost like a begging and it just goes on and on and on. I'm going to close Firefox. It looks like it's having problems right now. Um, so then she says, people change. I guess I'll just have to hope that you see it one day. Claudia has helped me learn. I don't think that has much to do with it. Maybe Claudia gave her a little ethical education, but Claudia clearly is okay with her still running Long Island Adoptive Families that helps hopeful adoptive parents. Let me reiterate, there was videos that Chamin has done that tell people how to coerce mothers. Um, original birth certificates, adoptive rights have little to do with the family preservation movement. They are two separate entities. Um, adoptees should just be given the rights that everybody else has. Um, the people that participate in that um, don't necessarily believe in family preservation, and that's okay. Um, but they're, they're, they have nothing to do with one another. Um, Claudia hires, I think she means hired, me last year to work with the coalition and she knows me and what I have done. So here again, there's lots to lose for Claudia if she's associated with somebody um, running this like Shimeen does. I was nicknamed a baby stealer group for a long time. <sighs> so yeah, anyway. Um, so this is Claudia's employer, AFFCNY, hired me. Claudia has me interviewing professionals to help me learn. I don't know what she means by professionals. I, honest to God, hope she doesn't mean like adoption professionals and teach the community the things that I didn't. So now she's also out there teaching the community, I guess. I'm not sure what qualifies her to teach the community, though. She's not a professional, remember? 
her only experience is as an adoptive parent and helping others learn how to adopt faster. A support group, remember? So I don't know what qualifies her to teach the community. Um, if you want to see what I've done, go to AFFCNY. Again, I want to try to convince you. Claudia gave me a chance. Claudia didn't more than give her a chance. Claudia used emotional blackmail to shut me up when I questioned her. Um, this group I run is important to New York, ethical and educational. Long Island adoptees is not important to New York. Long Island adoptive families, if, if I said adoptees, I meant adoptive families, is important to adoptive and pre-adoptive families. So you can see there's very clearly, you know, there's a lot to lose here. Um, I post my support group updates every month. The general meetings are for pre and post and just kind of, just kind of goes on. And then I just had enough. So I said, you don't, so you do not teach HAPs how to adopt, correct? That's what you're saying. You do not run a support group as a co-lead that helps make families. And again, remember, in the website it says she was the leader of the support group. You do not work with HAPs pursuing domestic infant adoption in any other capacity except to teach them how to be adoptive parents to adoptees. Long Island Adoptive Families does not teach HAPs how to adopt infants domestically. Is this what you're telling me? And I asked this one purposely because um, I wanted her to think that I thought this was okay. Um, because I don't think it's okay, to be honest with you. Um, Long Island Adoptive Families does not teach HAPs how to adopt infants domestically. Is this what you're telling me? Um, you aren't in the business of helping to teach others how to create more adoptees. So those are the questions I asked. I am not in the adoption business. I mean, clearly if she's running support groups for pre-placement, she is. I make no money. I don't care. I do not make matches. No, but you teach people how to match. I do not teach people to steal women's babies. No, because you don't consider matching stealing. You're okay with pre-placement. I've learned from Claudia. And again, she just keeps throwing Claudia's name in here. Like, um, she called on Claudia to silence me. Claudia called on herself to silence me, and it didn't work. I get that those videos I did for Kelly are awful. I've learned since then. Your actions speak louder than words. Um, I get it. You're mad at Kelly. What she's done is disgusting. So this is like kind of like gaslighting a little bit. I feel like her all her messages are gaslighting. Like I'm crazy. You know, I'm the crazy one for questioning her and wanting answers for everything that, you know, we've just looked at together. Um, but I'm not. I'm not crazy. I get you're mad at Kelly. Like, oh, calm down. You're just hysterical. I know you're mad at Kelly, but that has nothing to do with me. Um, what she's done is disgusting. You know, what you've both done. I'm sorry I was ever involved. I unknowingly and mistakenly played. She very knowingly and very deliberately um, did what she did. I'm not Kelly. As far as I'm concerned, you and Kelly participated in the same thing and you are still participating in it. Um, and then here we go, the cancer. I'm battling cancer and have weekly chemo. So it's almost like, oh, poor me again. Like she's trying to like pull on heartstrings and I don't care. Her cancer has nothing to do with what's going on. So I say, you're not answering my questions. If you're trying to be real, you would. And that's true. I stand by that. So again, I ask, so you do not teach hopeful adoptive parents how to adopt, correct? I don't teach domestic adoption. I said, does Long Island adoptive families use so? Because remember, she runs it. Um, yes, a couple families come to us for pre, but they moved to MA for Mass. Uh, I don't know if she means Massachusetts. I don't know, I could be being stupid right now. But they move on to MA. So, whatever that means. So, in other words, she's roundabout, not being very forthcoming. And they do. They do work with domestic infant adoption um, pre-placement. But she doesn't want to come out and say it. Mostly is pre-foster families for pre-placement. Mostly. Mostly is not all. It means they do still work with hopeful adoptive families. She's trying, but she's not, she's like beating around the bush with the answers here. She doesn't want to be, yes, we work with hopeful adoptive parents for domestic infant adoption. So then I just call her out. You know, you're wondering why I don't trust you. Your answers are not forthcoming. Um, and they're not. 
Um, I say your website says otherwise, and it's been updated this month. I remember we were talking about the blogs that were posted June 17th. Um, I said using Claudia really means nothing to me because she keeps using Claudia to try to make me trust her. So I feel like her and Claudia are kind of in on this together. On my website. Oh, my website. Oh, crap. That is awful. My website is old and not updated. So let's just take this situation here. I am a truly woke adoptive parent. I have learned so much. I mean, we just saw all the messages she spent trying to convince me how changed she is, right? Claudia made her see the light, but she doesn't think to change the Long Island adoptive family's website. That's how woke she is. She's still advertising for them for support groups, pre and post placement. But whoops, I didn't change the website. I'm so woke, I didn't want to get any of that coercive language off there. I, I have more screenshots on my phone, I'll show you. It's, I mean, there's lists of attorneys, there's lists of adoption agencies. I mean, it's it's like horrible. But, oh, my website's old and not updated. It doesn't reflect foster at all. I got cancer in November, Jen, so no, it doesn't reflect what I'm saying. Again cancer i didn't have time i got cancer she has time to lobby with claudia she has time to take a job with the adoption and foster family coalition of new york and she has time to post updates to the support groups on her facebook page but she does not have time to fix the website because she got cancer which is amazing to me because after this exchange a lot of stuff disappeared from the website immediately so I say it, someone who had truly had a change of heart, that would be the first priority to change. No, I don't believe any of this is genuine. I think you're looking out for your own ass. The blog on the website was updated less than two weeks ago. The cancer card doesn't work with me. You've obviously had enough time for this. And I show her a screenshot of the support groups that she's posting for. Right here, pre post adoptive support group. I don't have a blog anymore, so I don't think she's following me at this point that there's a blog on the uh, website. I don't know if she's, again, pretending to be coy or she doesn't know like she was in the group where the first confrontation took place. I said, but not to update your website. The blog section of your website has been active. Your name is all over that site. You're being disingenuous. Someone who truly changed would have nothing to do with an organization that helps HAPs learn how to adopt. All that you tell me doesn't match with what I see at all. I can't even tell you how honest I'm being, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what you think I do. I mean, it speaks for itself. And then she goes to kiss my ass. I'll always appreciate what you're doing. Like more ass kissing to try to get me to be quiet. What organization are you talking about? Um, so this has nothing to do with Kelly and everything to do with the fact that you're still associated with this behavior. Pre-birth matching, helping others learn how to make orphans to turn them into adoptees. Your organization. Um, Long Island Adoptive Families. I don't know what you're talking about. What organization? I don't do pre. And she can technically say this because she is no longer the one running the pre-placement support groups. She is just providing the platform for others to do them for her now. Um, I'm a peer-led support group. I am not a professional. Again, I am not a professional. So none of this is forthcoming. It's all disingenuous. This one actually should have come before the last one. Um, so she's saying that her blog is auto-generated and she set it up. Like somebody has to pick pick these photos to auto-post. So I don't know what to believe with that one either. Your organization, Long Island Adoptive Families, facilitates and advertises for pre-adoption support. No matter how many ways this Sunday you cut it, you are associated with this. You started this and you have not stopped it. And this is true. She started this. She's the one that did videos in Kelly's group. She's the one that taught hundreds of people how to coerce mothers, and she has not done anything to stop it. The website remained the same as it was. Her videos remained in the group. Um, you even continue to advertise it, and she does, with her come join our support groups. There's no way you're going to talk your way into convincing me not to see what my eyes are seeing. 
You didn't have time to correct your website? No, you didn't correct it because it's still happening. According to your own Facebook posts, I honestly don't have any more patience to talk to you. I've already invested way too much of my time and emotional energy on this. And I was done. And she said, I appreciate your knowledge. I appreciate what you do. Um, basically some more ass kissing. Um, Cause there's a lot to lose for her and Claudia. There's a lot at stake here. Um, I will tell you before I leave, it's um, extremely disheartening to me that somebody has, who has been involved in the family preservation movement for so long and that so many people look up to who has built such a reputation um, would vouch for somebody like this. And not that she can't say, oh, she's learning or, but it was to gaslight me. Like I shouldn't have questions that are asked. Like it should just be good enough for me that Claudia said she was okay. And it's not good enough for me. The very fact that Claudia stepped in to referee and to smack me down from asking these questions and then threw my daughter into it to get me to be quiet shows me that I shouldn't trust Claudia. Um, she used her power and her reputation to try to take the heat off Shabin because she has a lot to lose personally as well. Um, so she was looking out for herself. Um, and I'll just bring you back to the only girl in our group is to become a family. All right. That's all.